Hello everyone, my name is Eve and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm going to be bringing in just a little bit of astrological guidance, but more so some oracle guidance and then very personal messages, just very short ones for each one of the 12 signs starting with Aries and ending with Pisces. And all of these messages are coming through for this very powerful, potent and beautiful full moon and lunar eclipse in the sign of Taurus. So the moon is in the sign of Taurus and the sun, which is on the other side of the earth during the full moon and the eclipse is in the sign of Scorpio. The eclipse reaches its fullness in the early hours of the morning here on November 19th, 2021. And that's for the um, for North America, which is where I live, and I live um, in California. So for all of the East Coast, Central, Mountain, and Pacific, it will be occurring in the very early hours of the morning here on the 19th of November. Now, what is this eclipse going to bring in? Well, the moon is always being illuminated and highlighted by the sun during a full moon because during a full moon, that's when the sun's light is able to add magnification to the greatest portion of the moon. And remember, that's from our vantage point on the earth. So during a full moon, we see the fullness of the moon, but understand it's being illuminated by the light of the sun. So the sun is the illuminator and the moon rules all of the bodies of water on the earth. It rules our emotional bodies, our intuitive bodies. It's where our comfort zones lie. It can also be speaking to our habits, the things that we get very used to and the routines that we get into because the moon does represent also our comfort zone. And lastly, it does also represent family and how we view family and what we want in terms of family dynamics. And therefore, during a lunar eclipse, something very special is happening. The sun is being eclipsed by the earth. And so for those couple of hours, while the moon is slowly being eclipsed into its fullness and then exiting on the other side, which usually takes about five hours, whatever was hidden can now be revealed. And this can be anything hidden within the depth of your emotional body, within the depth of your psyche, a deep revelation on an emotional level is usually what the moon brings forward during a lunar eclipse. That could be a sudden realization or recognition of an emotion or a pattern that you have or an understanding of something where you're seeing it in a way you had not seen it before. So understand that during the lunar eclipse, we get not only illumination by the sun, we also get revelation from the moon. And so let's look at the sign languages here. The sun is in Scorpio, so that's a water sign. That's telling us that we are working with our psyche and our subconscious and unconscious patterns. And that this is a beautiful opportunity where maybe one of those patterns is going to reveal itself where perhaps something that was lying deep beneath the unconscious subconscious mind that we weren't fully aware of, maybe we had an inkling, but we weren't sure, is now gonna make itself fully present within our mind and within our emotional body and our intuitive body. So please pay very close attention to this lunar eclipse and the preceding days and even weeks where it's going to be fully active. Yes, it's going to be most powerful for the 48 hours after that because the sun will only be in Scorpio for about 48 hours after this lunar eclipse. I believe on the night of the 21st or morning of the 22nd, it goes into Sagittarius. So therefore, this lunar eclipse will be at its most potent 
in terms of these hidden things or these subconscious psyche, psychological things coming through in those 48 hours. However, understand the lunar eclipse in its totality is a six month journey that we are on, which completes when it reaches the new moon in Taurus, which will be next May. So you can also look at it as these are revelations guiding you over the next six months of your life. Now let's look at the moon in Taurus. Well, Taurus is the moon on its throne. That is the Empress energy and the Queen of Pentacles in particular. But I would also put the Queen of Cups in there because remember the moon is very comfortable in water signs. She is most comfortable in the signs of Cancer, Pisces, and Taurus. Therefore, the Queen of Pentacles and the Queen of Cups fit this energy very, very well. But ultimately, because she's on her throne in Taurus, she is ruled by the Empress because Taurus is Venus energy. Therefore, whatever is hidden or whatever is waiting to reveal itself to you or whatever recognition or emotional intuitive realization you have or someone near you has in the arenas of abundance because Venus rules that and so does Taurus. So it's going to be the arenas of abundance prosperity, our life mission, because Taurus is about wanting to build that on the earth plane. It's going to be issues of creativity, and that also includes fertility and children. And lastly, but definitely not least, it's around love. So understand the messages coming through here for you are going to be in these areas of your life abundance, creativity, fertility, children, and love. So let's dive into the oracle messages. And I will be putting the timestamps below. I wanted to get two very general messages for the just the, the flavor of what this lunar eclipse is bringing in and what kind of guidance we are meant to be paying attention to at this time. So I pulled two cards, and the first one is the Arrow Master, hitting the mark, intention and detachment, number 10. Very interesting, because when I see this card, I see the sign of Sagittarius, and there they are, holding a bow. I see a lot of magical energy here, so I'm getting some Piscean energy and Scorpio energy in here as well. And then number 10 in the Tarot is the Wheel of Fortune, which is ruled by Sagittarius. So something in your life with this eclipse is about to change, is about to shift. And the Arrow Master here is guiding you through this journey. So let me read the messages. And I'm going to read the messages from the Arrow Master in terms of him as your ally, but also as your challenger. The Arrow Master appears to help you target your intentions and teaches you how to shoot straight for the stars. So this is also the star card energy, where it's time for you to reach for your dreams. The message needs you to be deliberate about focusing your dreams and desires with intention, and it's also about aligning your intention then with spirit. And then let your arrows fly on the wind, directed by the divine until they reach their goal. So we've got a message about setting intentions, being very clear about that, reaching for your, for your dreams and, the, and not compromising on that, but also realizing that to accomplish this, you must do so through your spiritual body not just your physical body or your mental body. You must do it with your whole being here. The only way to hit the target is to allow the arrow of your intention to fly unencumbered by your eagerness to see it travel exactly where you want it to go. You may think it needs to veer a certain way to reach your goal, but in the invisible realms, human power cannot make this happen. Only spiritual power can. The divine has its own idea of how the arrow flies and upon what wind it's going to be carried. 
Nonetheless, if you don't shoot, you will never score. So the other message here is it's time to take action. This is a fortunate message as long as you remember also the law of detachment. If you do, then rest assured that you will be on the right point. Your arrow will hit its target. So with the idea of the arrow master, you have to really clear your mind, connecting with your spirit and your heart, and know what it is that you want to achieve and where you want to place your arrows, what direction you want them to fly in, and then you let them fly. Because once they're flying, you're not in control of them anymore, are you? You have to rely on the winds and the winds of spirit to carry them. So the challenger message is, the arrow master appears to let you know that if you continue on your present course, you could also be shooting, you in, you, shooting yourself in the foot. So for some of you, the challenge is to take stock and really make sure you know you're on the right course. Again, we're going back to make sure that your intentions are crystal clear here. Take stock of the direction you are wanting to point your arrows in. And how do you do this? By taking a look at the motives behind why you want to reach your goal at all. Is this a path of true destiny or is it the lure of fantasy and ego desires? Are you setting your intention to win something away from another or to get what you want? and knowing that it's good for everybody involved, okay? So the last reminder with the challenger part of this is remember that this is not a race or a competition. The only person you're actually competing with is yourself. This is the time to ask for the very highest intentions and to replace the old ones that are not coming from the highest place of your being. And sometimes a new set of arrows and another target all together are what is being called for hey, what is being called for here. Okay, so very interesting messages coming from the arrow master. And I'm getting more than anything clarity of thought and clarity of purpose along with following your heart and your intuition. So let's look at the second guidance message here, the keeper of the scales. We've got Libra energy here. Everything is about fairness and balance. It's about making sure that this journey you're on here with the arrow master, that before you set your intentions and get your arrow ready, your life needs to be in balance. It doesn't have to be fully in balance in the physical though. The guidance here that is that it needs to be in balance within your mind, within your heart, and within your energy. That's the ultimate message from the keeper of the scales, okay? And the number there is 38, which reduces for, to an 11. Isn't it interesting we have a 10 and 11? They're following each other here. So the arrow mo master is pointing to the keeper of the scales. The divine feminine and the divine masculine are very present in these energies. And perhaps, perhaps the balancing act that we're doing here during this lunar eclipse energy, which really is about balance, by the way, all full, full, full moons are, is we're balancing out our masculine and feminine. So the keeper of the scales is the law of harmony, okay? And so when she is present, so is the law of harmony. And you're being asked to align with her right now to make conscious choices that are going to create balance in your life. When you do this, you also magically align with the abundance of the universe and the powerful forces of synchronicity. And this creates conditions and possibilities that lead to the fulfillment of your very highest intentions. Harmony, though, must begin with the self first and then it can resonate outwards to others. You're in harmony with yourself when you nurture yourself with love, respect, respect, and acceptance, and always fully taking responsibility for your own actions. Only then can you be in harmony with others and your environment. And this is because love is the central force that connects all of life and aligns you with like-minded others. Now the other message here 
is one of restoration and the positive fair resolution in any dispute that you may be involved with. So this is about all legal matters. And so the keeper of the scales is telling you that this eclipse energy is bringing in a fair resolution and a peaceful resolution to anything where there may be a dispute, a disagreement, a divorce, a separation, or any kind of agreement that is involved with several people, a contract. It's anything that involves possible legal matters here, okay? Remember, the keeper of the scales is always just and kind. Now, as the challenger, though, she's asking you to look at your life, and if you've been feeling very out of balance and confused, she's asking you to look at that. Have you been down in the dumps lately? Have you been looking at life from the glass half empty, not the glass half full? That means you are not in alignment with your higher power, right? Because you're looking at how life is treating you as if it's unfair, that you feel like other people are getting ahead of you. You feel like you're being driven into your ego more than your spirit. Your pride is acting up. There might be self-centeredness coming in. All these things are signs that you are out of balance. And the other message here could pertain to the behaviors of others where they may be throwing your life out of whack, but ultimately recognize you and you alone are in charge of your own inner harmony and peace. Nobody else is. So if you surround yourself with people where you find that you're easily then thrown out of balance, then you need to change the people you surround yourself with, right? And if it happens to be a work situation where you can't quite change that, then meditate before you go in, have positive affirmations in your mind, be very grounded when you go to work. But more than anything else, do not get involved in drama. Okay, so that's one of the biggest messages here for those of you that are finding yourself out of balance anywhere in your life during this cycle. Grab the tools that bring you back into balance. And remember, to achieve balance, you must first achieve groundedness. Because if you are being distracted all the time and in your, in, 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 in your, in your mind, I'm trying to go through this so fast, my apologies. If you find yourself in your mind all the time and distracted by so many different things around you, social media, your phone, people calling you this, that, you are ungrounded. And the counsel is seek to balance your own energy and take control of it because that is when you can set the intentions and you will be fully ready to let those arrows take flight, okay? So those are the overall messages. Let's look at the individual signs. And I was asking about what is being revealed. Now, you can pick your sun sign, moon sign, rising here. You could listen to whichever one floats your boat. So please don't feel like you have to be attached only to your sun sign. Let's start off with Aries first. I wanted to pull messages from the Goddess Oracle deck, the Lover's Path to Row, and then some extra little message cards. So for those of you that have Aries energy or felt compelled to pick pile number one, the message is Mary Magdalene, the divine, beautiful, ascended master and goddess Mary Magdalene. Your journey now is one of unconditional love to love yourself, others, in every situation, no matter what the outward appearances may be. So she's asking you to look deeper. Look deeper and choose love. Choose to respond through the eyes of love. And then the Tarot message is the Six of Staves, which is the Six of Wands. I love it. That's usually a message of success, okay, achievement, things coming to, towards you, things working out, but it can also be a message of love, 
because these messages today are about love. They're not only about abundance, prosperity, and creativity. They're also about love. And that's what I feel this is about because she's talking to us about love, that maybe there is someone coming towards you here. So the six of staves or the six of wands is a movement, is a message of success and movement. And it's a six number, so the movement is in harmony when you respond from a place of unconditional love. This beautiful knight, it looks to me like a knight on a horse. I almost missed that card and thought it was the knight of staves, but it isn't, it's the six. Either way, it means something quite beautiful is wanting to find you here as long as you come from that place of love. And I feel like someone is coming towards you in love or you're wanting to go towards them. So let's look at the extra little messages from the um, Enchanted Embrace. I can't help falling in love with you. You know, I was feeling like this was someone coming towards you. Someone is in love with you. And that is a wands card or a fire card, the suit of fire. That means that it's coming in quickly and this person has the courage to tell you how they really feel. I can't help falling in love with you. And the other message is, I just want you to know who I am. So the messages are, are a little bit different. They're not exactly the same. This also means someone's trying to let you know that they love you, but they also want you to acknowledge them. I want you to know who I am. So that can be from the same person who's coming in to tell you how they feel, but it could also be a separate message from someone coming towards you that just wants to share who they are with you, whether it's a love message or a friendship or a business message, okay? So those are the messages for Aries. Let's move on now to Taurus. And we have the beautiful goddess Ishel, the medicine woman. You are a channel for divine healing power. Okay, so for those of you that have Taurus or have felt drawn to pile number two, this is a time to either get some healing done on you, to clear your auric field, to clear your body, get some massage reiki done, or it's a time to maybe go somewhere on a retreat. See that beautiful background? It looks like it's in Peru or Costa Rica. Perhaps it's in um, Tulum. Okay, so going on a retreat or a vacation might be just what you need in these next couple weeks or sometime in these next six months. But it's also letting you know that you are a channel for divine healing power, that you carry the healing you seek within you. And also that maybe you're a healer. Maybe that's the field that you, that you actually um, work in right now and that there's going to be further development within that field. Maybe perhaps new healing power is coming to you at this time. And lastly, this is a message for those of you that are wanting to become healers or you're wanting to study to become a healer. And so this would be a yes message to do so, to do just so. Now the Tarot message is the Queen of Stays, which is the Queen of Wands. Okay, so this is very divine feminine energy here with uh, Taurus energy. Now in terms of love, this could be for a man. Maybe there's a masculine watching here or a feminine who likes her own sex. And this is telling you there's a beautiful woman that's coming into your world or someone you really care about deeply. Very strong divine feminine energy here. And what I like here is I'm also seeing that this is the businesswoman because the queen of wands is a businesswoman. She's an entrepreneur. She's someone who's using her creativity and creating new ventures and new themes in her life. So very beautiful messages there. And in terms of love, again, we're getting some fiery energy here. Maybe your love life is going through a very profound, significant healing at this time, and it's coming in to some beautiful passion. So let's look at the extra messages. Listen with compassion. So I'm getting a healing message with that, absolutely. It's important to 
listen as much as you speak and to really listen with compassion because that's the answer that will perhaps heal whatever's going on here. Maybe there is a relationship issue where there does require a healing and with the Queen of Wands, you've ha you have to have the courage to come in for that, but you have to bring compassion with you as your superpower. And then the last message is to be present in the moment. So really be present for whatever the healing is or the situation is, be fully present and available is what I'm getting. Okay, thank you so much, Taurus. Let's now move on to the lovely Geminis. Let's see what messages we have from the goddess realm. We have the goddess Mav of cycles and rhythms. Honor the cycles of your body energy levels and emotions. Well, that's another feminine energy here. Remember, the lunar eclipse in Taurus is very much guided by and ruled by the divine feminine aspect of our nature. Okay, we all carry both within us, masculine and feminine, but we're being guided and asked right now to really build and work with our feminine sides more. So far, the three first piles a lot of divine feminine energy that I'm seeing here, though in pile number one, I also saw a significant amount of masculine. So being paying attention to how you're feeling, you know, and really listening to the cycles and rhythms going on for you right now. What I'm getting in this message is it's time for you to really work with your body and your energy levels. So I'm getting a message of working with your physical being, but also working with your emotional being and trying to balance them out, but really honor them. So this is about listening to how your body is speaking to you, what it's trying to tell you, but also listening to your heart. And of course that makes sense because we have the seven of cups. Okay, so this could be about love, that you have choices in love. And if it's about your work or abundance, you have different opportunities and you're not clear on which one you want to choose. And the message here is actually quite clear to me. It means in order to know what the right choice is here or opportunity in business, love, or creativity, you need to first honor yourself. Dive deep within your inner body, be well rested, let your emotions reach a place of quiet and peace, and only then will you understand or find the answer you seek. Because the Seven of Cups has two very predominant messages. One, that there could be confusion happening in your life right now. You're feeling confused and indecisive. You don't feel like you can see clearly. And Mav is telling you, get into your body and into your heart, and the answers lie there, but they also lie, you're going to find the answers easier when you're in a relaxed, peaceful, grounded state, okay? So let's look at the final messages, embrace joy. Okay, so to make your decision easier, which of the decisions brings you towards joy? That's one of your messages, follow your joy. And, and lastly, step back and observe. So you've got two very beautiful guidance cards there for the Seven of Cups. Follow your joy, but also be the observer. Step back far enough where you can really observe and get a very neutral perspective and then recognize which path is going to bring you the most joy, and that is your answer. Okay? beautiful messages. You know, I just realized Geminis can get very indecisive. So that actually kind of fits, doesn't it? So let's go on towards the sign of cancer now. The fourth pile. We have Arakura, and she's the goddess of blossoming. You are just getting started, so have patience with yourself in the process, and do not give up. So she's wanting to remind you that you're going through a beautiful awakening in your life right now. You are flowering. You are blossoming. You need to be in the process, just like that butterfly coming out of the chrysalis. This, is, this reminds me of an orchid. I think that is an orchid. Is that an orchid? Okay. Could be a bunch of other flowers too, though. 
that you are going through something right now. So you've got to be very gentle and kind with yourself and have patience, please. Don't give up just because something isn't happening at the speed you would like it to happen. Okay, this is definitely about love. Okay, <laughs> we have the Hierophant. This could be about a relationship that you're wanting something to happen in a relationship. Perhaps you're dating someone, you've been dating them for a while, you want to get engaged, or maybe you've been engaged for a while, you want to get married. This is taking your relationship to the next commitment. That's what this card is about. It's a card of commitment. And in this deck, it's a commitment to love partnership. But I'm going to read it also as a commitment to business partnership because the moon in Taurus is also about business partnership. But this is about partnership, those of you that have cancers. And for those of you that are in a marriage, maybe you need to have patience with what's going on in your partnership right now and give each other the benefit of the doubt because there's a deeper awakening that's happening within your partnership and maybe one of you's growing a little faster than the, than the other and you have to wait for the other one to catch up. Maybe you're both awakening and needing extra individual time on your own in that, that process. You know, when we're going through it, through the awakening, which I call the, which is also the ascension, we have to spend time with ourselves. If we can't do that, we're actually not on the awakening pathway. So if you're in a marriage and you feel yourself going through this, make sure that you take time just for you every single day. That is my counsel here, okay? And lastly, for those of you that are single, this is a very beautiful message that you're about to meet somebody that is looking for commitment, that they're a very beautifully balanced person and they want to do this for the long haul, that they're very serious in looking for love right now. But again, please be patient. I feel like for those of you that are single, the message is please don't give up on love at this time. It's wanting to find you. And we have two messages here. I would be honored to meet you. Okay, so this is for those of you that are single. Someone may be around you already that you're not aware of that wants to go out with you. So please have patience and be open is what I'm going to tell you. Okay, someone is really wants to meet you. And maybe you know who this is. And maybe that's coming from you. Maybe you want to meet somebody. So please be open. Oh, I love it. And this is for those of you that are already in a relationship. I want to spend my life time loving you. Beautiful, beautiful message. So this deck, pile number four, four for those of you that are cancers, is a beautiful message of really deep soul connected divine counterpart love. So congratulations to, to those of you who chose this pile, okay? Even if you don't have cancer and you chose it, the message is meant for you, okay? Let's move on to Leo here. Oh my gosh, I'm laughing. <laughs> Freya, be bold. And what do we have here? We have a feline. We have the cat family, part of the lion family, right? Unleash your adventurous side, take risks and be daring. So for pile number five, or those of you that have Leo, the message is to be daring in your life right now, to go on an adventure, take risks, be bold, be, be who you are. I'm, I'm being told, be visible. It's not a time to hide away right now. Oh, no, it isn't because you have the nine of cups. This is about a wish fulfillment. Okay, beautiful messages you're having something really beautiful coming into your life, but it's coming from the, the, the place of you being able to be bold, be courageous, and to take a risk. That's how you're going to get your wish fulfillment. So if you're going to stay at home and hermit and not make an effort, that Nine of Cups is not necessarily going to knock on your door. It may, but then you still have to open the door. 
okay? So this is an energy of taking action place. So let's look at the, the two clarifiers here. So you're going to take action. Ooh, you're going to tell someone you love them. Okay, so this is about love. Well, the Nine of Cups usually is, but it can also be a fulfillment card in other areas too. You want to tell someone you love them or someone else is coming in to tell you they love you. A Leo or someone with strong fire may be coming into your life to tell you that they love you. And the second clarifier is to find the gift. Now this card goes head, you know, it goes along beautifully with the Nine of Cups because that's about a wish fulfillment. Find the gift means to always look for the blessing. Always look for the blessing, even when it's in disguise. And when you are looking at life from that framework or that lens where you're always looking for the blessing, even in the most challenging situations, honey, you will always achieve the Nine of Cups because your attitude is going to be so strong so bold and so positive and high and optimistic that you will definitely get rewarded for this. I love the message for the sign of Leo. All righty, let's move on to Virgo. Okay, now this coincides with the original oracle messages in the beginning. So Maat is the goddess of fairness and justice. She's the, um, the keeper of the scales. So this is for those of you that have Virgo or strong Virgo in your chart. This situation will be handled in a fair and just manner. So for those of you that chose pile number six, either based on the pile or because you have Virgo in your chart, or maybe the person you're wanting to ask about is a Virgo or has Virgo, then there may be something that you two are involved in where maybe it is a court case, maybe there is some kind of separation or maybe something you're wanting to win together and you're working together to achieve this balanced and fair situation. But I love it because Ma'at is assuring you that everything will be handled in a fair and just manner here, okay? It's going to be handled in a fair and a just manner. Now, I had some cards here, and I think they flew away. Let me find them. Okay, beautiful. We have the magician. Yeah, they will be handled in a just and fair manner if you manifest it. So this is telling you, honey, you've got the power. You've got the power to manifest the most positive, just outcome that you could possibly achieve. But you've got to believe that you have the power. And not only that, it's about positive thinking and positive visualization, but coming at this from a place of balance within yourself. Now, this is the card of magic. So I'm getting a very, very positive message here. I feel like whatever is trying to resolve itself or get healed or peaceful resolution or whatever balance you're seeking in your life right now, even if it has nothing to do with a court case, that the answer is you're going to get there. But you're going to get there because magic is coming into your life, okay? Something is wanting to manifest for you because you've been asking for this. Now, what are the extra clarifiers here? Reflect. So spend some time on inner reflection. And the reflect card means reflect on what it is you truly desire here. What is it you want to achieve here? What do you consider truly balanced and fair in your life, okay? How would your life look if it was in harmony? Because what it looks like in harmony for one person is not the same for another. So this is about taking some time to reflect. And then lastly, lead from your heart and remember with your head. I love that. That right there is a card of balance, right? It's saying your answer lies in bringing the heart and the head together. But with the head, you want to remember from the head. And the heart, you want it to be your guide. Okay? So lead with the heart and remember 
with your head. Rational and intuitive all blended together with the magician. I love this message. Balance and harmony and justice for Virgos. So let's move on now to Libras. I have a feeling we're getting a very different energy now. Yes, we are. We have the goddess of fertility. It is the perfect time for you to start new projects, ac access new ideas, and give birth to new conditions in your life. Now, with this one specifically, you know, Astara is the goddess of springtime, but she's primarily also the goddess of the equinoxes. So you could say she's spring and autumn. And of course, we're in autumn right now. And it's kind of interesting because we're seeing like a very crescent moon. But in this card, I'm also getting the energy of the eclipse. So this specific lunar eclipse is asking you to plant seeds for what the spring is going to truly bloom in your life. So for those of you that are Libra, um, you're, whatever you're building now, um, you need to keep working on it for the next six months, okay? Watering the ground that you're planting the seeds in. It's a wonderful time for you to be creative. For those that p chose pile number seven or Libra, I'm getting a very, very powerful creative energy here, okay? And I'm getting it around creativity and fertility. So for some of you, this could be about children or having a family or or moving, going somewhere with your family, changing households, okay? So very beautiful energy of prosperity and fertility here. And the Tarot message is the Princess of Staves, which is the Princess of Wands, okay? So there's, you're taking action because the Princess is akin to the page in the regular Tarot. And the page is always about messages and sending messages and communicating. The pages and the knights are always about action, okay? The knights are more about physical action and the pages or princes are more about communication, communicative action. And so you're being called on though to plant the seeds through the proper forms or channels of communication here. Okay, but this can also mean that there's some form of communication that is coming to you that you've been waiting for or that's going to surprise you and it's going to surprise you in a really, really beautiful way. You know, the Princess of Wands can also be a love message here. So maybe someone is getting on their horse and running towards you at the speed of light, right? And if that's the case, let's see what the clarifying messages are. I could get lost in your eyes. So this is a message of love. We've got creative messages, fertility messages, and love messages. I could get lost in your eyes. I want to feel your touch. Okay. Well, that does correspond with wands because it's very much about passion, not necessarily always about love. Cups is about love. So whatever this passionate person or message coming to you is, it's someone who absolutely adores you. They're, you just, they just get all um, fired up when they think about you, okay? So my one counsel here with you, with you that chose this pile, though, is please take it slowly because you want to be sure that the passion is followed up with love, okay? Especially if you want something long-term. And that does coincide with fertility, because you're building something over the next six months. So please, even though there's action here and someone might be coming in very quickly or you're wanting to go after something quickly, please take your time. Make sure you're planting your seeds properly and watering the ground for whatever it is that you're wanting to create, whether it's children, family, abundance, or love. So let's look now at Scorpio. And again, the wheel turns in a different direction. We have the message from the goddess Una. Easy does it. So this is a message of slowing down, taking some rest and rejuvenation time. There is no need to hurry or force things to happen. Everything is occurring in perfect timing. So we have two messages here, right? Or three. One 
easy does it. Be gentle with yourself too. Don't hurry or force anything. You don't have the energy right now to do that. That's one of the messages. Two, you don't want to force it because there's a divine timing involved here. And you know, Una is one of the goddesses involved with our destiny. And one of the biggest messages from her is that your destiny is protected by the gods. And no one is competing with you for your mission. So take time to rest, to get clear, to be sure that you are ready and your mission will be waiting for you. That's one of her messages. And the other one is that divine timing is guiding your life at this time. So please be in alignment with that. And yes, I'm not surprised, the Four of Arrows. That's the card of rest and rejuvenation. Okay, so the Four of Arrows or the Four of Swords. See, they're both sleeping, right? <laughs> it's a card of rejuvenation. It's time to rest. It's time to rejuvenate, to meditate, to reflect, to go inward. Take care of yourself right now. There's no need to hurry. And let's look at the last clarification cards. Oh, this is so funny. Sit, think, and proceed with caution. <laughs> Again, we're getting a third message about sitting which, or laying down, sleeping, thinking. Proceed with caution means one step at a time. Okay? But there could also be a specific message for someone watching today that maybe you need to hear that specific message. Proceed with caution. Maybe what lies in this direction isn't exactly what you want. You know, the Four of Arrows asks, asks you to really get clear on this. Make sure that this is what you want, okay? And the last clarifier is you are ready to go forward. I love it because that's at the end of this, right? When you've rested, you've thought clearly, you've meditated enough, you've rested, you've perhaps gone out and gotten some more information too because when we're dealing with the arrows or the swords, another message could be about gathering information to help you make your decision. I'm feeling like there's a decision here, okay? But you've got to be sure that you are fully rested, and clear within your mind and body so that you know that you are ready and then go forward, okay? Love the message here for pile number eight, which is for Scorpios. This would make sense because I feel like for Scorpio that when Jupiter goes into Pisces at the end of December and then all of next year, the energy will be more ripe for them. Okay, let's go on to Sagittarius. The message is independence. Your independence is a foundation for your strength and success. So for pile number nine, is it? Yes, pile number nine, which is Sag, your independence is the key factor here. When I think of Sages, that is absolutely correct. They like to be able to be free to go wherever they want to go. They don't want people or situations holding them back too much. Even though I've met a lot of Sages that love people and they love socializing, they also need to be very free-flowing, okay? And so I'm getting from the goddess Bast that right now you want to really build on the foundations of your own personal independence, that this perhaps for you this timing right now in this eclipse is about building your business, building your work foundation, building your abundance foundation, building your financial coffers, okay? Now let's look a little bit further to see what the Tarot message is. Interesting, we have the hanged man, which in this deck is sacrifice. And so we're getting different messages here. I'm going to read it from the lover's Tarot. It could mean that there might be a compromise that you need to make here, a sacrifice of some form to, to be independent. And you know what I'm getting here for some of you? That you're actually leaving a relationship, that you've realized that you need your independence right now, that you, you need to find who you are, you need to put the energy into your mission, your creativity, and building 
whatever you perceive as your, um, your foundation or your platform and that perhaps you felt that you've been in a relationship that is holding you back, that something about this relationship hasn't allowed you to fully be in your personal power, okay? Because Bast is a, a goddess of personal power. And the other message I'm getting here is, you know, look at your relationships at this time, both romantic and business and even friendships. And notice the ones that pull you back, that they don't really honor you stepping into your fullness or your authenticity. And know that these relationships are actually not helping you at this time, okay? Now, the hanged man energy is asking you to also look at things from a different perspective. Maybe it is asking you, so I'm going to turn this around, and maybe it's asking you to look at someone's perspective other than your own, okay? So there's two very different messages for pile number um, nine here. One, that you need to move away from something so that you can move forward in your life. And for, pile, for the second pile here, it's maybe you've been too independent and too focused on your own self to the detriment of the people you actually do love and that you need a new perspective or a different perspective. You need to see outside the box and you need to take into consideration other people's points of view especially if you love these people and you want them in your life. If it's a love partner or if it's a business partnership in a business that you really want to see go forward, you've got to step back and allow multiple perspectives to be on the table here. Okay, so let's look at the clarifying messages. Speak from truth and don't worry about the outcome. Okay, so this I'm getting for the pile number one I was feeling here. Those of you that are feeling held back by something else, someone else or a situation, you're being told it's time for you to move into your independence. You have to just speak from your personal truth right now. And you cannot worry about what other people think. Okay. I was feeling this message predominating here. Okay. You cannot be worried what, the, what other people think about you because your mission, your happiness, that belongs to you. It doesn't belong to anybody else, okay? Let's look at the second one. Express your creativity, okay? So the final message here is it's time, regardless, to become more creative. So whether you need to become solo or more independent, speak your truth so that you can be more creative, that's one message. And perhaps expressing your creativity means you're sitting down with other people and in the hanged man energy, and you're really looking at multiple perspectives, that different point of views and looking at things from outside the box is going to allow your creativity to further unveil itself. Okay, a lot of messages here for this pile. So that's for Sag. Let's move on to Capricorns. Oh, wow. I love this message. Lakshmi, a bright future. Stop worrying as everything is going to be fine. Okay. Now, when, you're, when we're working with the goddess Lakshmi, I always counsel my clients to bring in also the god Ganesha, the elephant god, because Lakshmi is the goddess of abundance, and prosperity in all of its many forms, not just creativity and work and money, but also love, okay? She's about abundance in all forms. And Ganesha works with her because he is the remover of obstacles. So to get this bright future, uh, this abundantly bright future, you need to call in Ganesha to remove any obstacles that might be in the way. And, I, and she's telling you right here that one of your biggest obstacles is you worry too much. Every time we go into worry, we go into a small-minded place. Okay, so seek to find something to replace that. So every time you find yourself worrying, replace worry instead with trust. Replace it instead with optimism. 
positive thinking. So let's go a little bit further here with the Tarot. We have the Princess of Cups. Okay. So with Lakshmi, I was originally feeling this might be about work or money. But now with the Princess of Cups, I feel that it's also about love. Someone might be coming to offer you a cup of love. And we had this in one of the other piles. I can't remember which one it was. But we also have um, the Eclipse energy right there. Oh, yes, it was the Libra pile. So Capricorns, uh, Capricorn and Libra, there's something synchronizing between the two of you. There's a cup that's coming towards you, and it could be a cup of love, a message of love, okay? Because the princesses are messengers. But this can also be about you, that your own cup, you are filling your own cup right now. And in doing so, you are ready now to open yourself up to love, to either new love or to offer that cup to someone or to build the love in your current relationships. But this is all about love and having a beautiful, bright future. I love the messages for Capricorn. Give your time to another person. Yeah, so this is about sharing your time with others. This is about sharing. I feel a lot of celebratory energy so far with the Capricorn pile. Give your time to others and begin your dream. Okay, we've got two beautiful clarifiers here that it's time to share in your abundance and prosperity and building it and to share your cup of love. And it's time to begin your dream. You know what they say, there's no time like now. I love you Capricorns. Let me know how these messages resonated with you. Let's go with my last two, my Aquarians. Wow. I knew Guinevere was going to come out for somebody today. I could feel it. So for those of you that are chose pile number 11 or have Aquarius in your chart, this is about true love. The, romance, the romantic stirrings in your heart have propelled the universe to deliver great love to you. Okay? So you're on a mission of true love. And remember, on that mission, we must always start with giving ourselves true love. From that place is where our heart expands, and we are a magnifier to bring that true love towards us. So you really want true love in your life, but you're also in the place where you want to be that person. So let's look at the Tarot message. And interestingly enough, it's the Two of Arrows. And that means that's a card of decisions. We've got two arrows. Which one are you going to choose? And so this could be that you have more than one choice in love. And you're not sure which one is true love. You're not sure. That's one message. The other one is that maybe you are in a current relationship right now, but you know it's not your true love partner. And there is a true love partner awaiting you, and you may already know who it is, but it means you're going to have to make a decision to leave the current relationship that you are in. So for Aquarius right now, I'm not getting anything other than a love message here. Okay? So if your, your question today has something to do with more than love, you may want to pick one of the other piles as well. And the two of arrows could be that there's, there's just choices here and there's indecision, okay? But lastly, what I'm getting from that is please pay attention to your dreams, that you may be getting the messages you need and the extra guidance you need from your dreams and you're being asked to pay attention to them. So let's see if we can get, us, get some more messages from the clarifiers. I would walk 500 miles to be with you. Ah, uh, so this could be a relationship at a distance. Okay, but that's the true love message. You want someone that would walk 500 miles to be with you because that message is, I don't care where I have to go as long as I'm with you because that's where my heart is. My heart is with you. So this is a beautiful true love message, okay? The second one is, I don't deserve you. 
Now, that one, I think, belongs with the Two of Arrows, don't you? Maybe you're having a hard time making a decision because you don't feel like you're deserving of true love. You know, maybe you don't feel like you deserve the person you're looking at. Now, I want us to be able to switch this around, too. I could be speaking to you about the person that you love, that you care about, that you're already seeing a magnetic connection to, or the next relationship entering your life, that you could feel this instant magnetism and wonder why they're not running towards you or racing towards you. And it's because two reasons. One, they don't feel like they deserve you. Even though they would walk 500 miles for you, they don't feel like they deserve you. There's an inner contradiction within them, which is what the Two of Arrows is always about. It's about an inner contradiction, just as it can be about choosing between two people. And perhaps when they meet you, they're with someone else and they, they're not sure if they can leave them because they don't know that they deserve the love that you're going to bring to them. Okay? So please take the message however it resonates for you because this can be speaking about the, the person coming towards you or someone in your life currently or it could be referring to you and how you feel that maybe you have a decision to make in true love, that you really want true love, but you need to leave someone to get it. And so you have to ask that question, gosh, maybe I'm not leaving because I don't feel like I deserve it. Yet guys, you really want it. So this is an inner conflict then that only you can resolve, okay? So that's the guidance for pile number 11. And last but not least, we have my beautiful Pisces. We have the Judgment card. And this is the card of return. But it's also the card of reward. And that we get, we, we get what we sow, we reap what we sow. But in the Lover's card, this is the return of a love that someone has waited a very, very long time for. And you know, a long time is different for every person. For some, a long time could be months. For others, it could be years. And for some, it could be one or two decades. You know, this is the return of, of, of someone you love. Could be with the return of an old love. Could be with the return of a friend who becomes a love. Um, could be return, the return of a love from another lifetime that you haven't actually even met yet. But this is all about love returning to your life. That it's time to leave the walls of your castle. You don't have to be a hermit anymore. That's the other message I'm getting. Because love is wanting to find you. Whether it's a return or whether it's new love, that you are ready now for that. Okay, I, it's funny, I pulled out the tarot before the goddess. Wow, okay, there's something going on here with Pisces. Okay, that's because I had to go to the love message first before I went to the boundaries. You, are, you will be ready and are ready for this love when you love yourself enough to say no to others. Demands on your time and energy. So this is telling me a couple different things, Pisces, in pile number 12, that one... In your, on your love journey, you have to be very clear with your boundaries. You have to recognize what the right love for you is and be able to say no to what the love that's not right for you is, okay? So it's about using the sacred no, but it also means that what I'm getting for some of you, I feel, yeah, I'm going to move it like this, okay, is... You've been in this past pattern of two things. One, you've been working very, very strong on your boundaries. And you have such strong boundaries that you haven't opened yourself up for love. And so you've been in the hermit mode or the castle and love, love hasn't found you. But the angels and your guides right now are telling you it's time. The time has arrived. And here we have Jupiter 
moving into Pisces at the end of December and Neptune coming out of retrograde in Pisces at the end of November. So absolutely it's the right time for Pisces. So lay, perhaps lay down some of your boundaries a little bit to allow the love in, okay? That's one big message. Then on the other side for a whole nother bunch of you, it's telling you you need to have stronger boundaries <clears throat> in saying no to others, others, other people pulling on your time because you've been giving all of your time away to other things and other people and you're not leaving anything left for love. That's the other message here. So you decide how boundaries fits your particular situation. And let's look at the last clarifying messages here. Our mental synchronization can have but one explanation, that you and I were meant to be. So I feel like there's a divine counterpart coming in here. And I got that for pile number 11, Aquarius, as well, that these two piles in particular, you want true love, okay? You want divine partnership. And this is telling you that your divine partner in you, you have mental te telepathy right now. And that's one of the ways you're going to know that this is a divine connection or a divine soul connection because you can read each other's thoughts. You can feel each other's emotions across the distance. Okay, that is telling you there's a beautiful mental synchronization here. And the last message is, can you feel my love? Ooh, I love that. So your beloved is coming in here, Pisces. If you're not already with them, okay? And if you are in a current relationship, then you need to be working on maybe some boundary issues in your current relationship because you want to have time within your partnership to bring it to this next level where you can literally read each other's minds and you can feel the love where you don't actually need to even speak a word. Now that is true love, where the love is so magnetic that the energy itself is what speaks. Okay, beautiful love message. Alrighty, we are done here today. And as I complete, I just want to let everybody know that I'm having my lecture for the end of this year, I'm going to bring in just a couple messages for completing 2021, and I'm going to specifically focus in on 2022 and what we have to look forward to in that year. So I will be doing a lecture over Zoom here on Sunday, I believe it's the 29th, 28th, Sunday the 28th of November. So reach out to me if you want to participate in that Zoom. The fee will be $25 for the entire um, lecture. It's going to be a little longer than normal. I'm going to be bringing in a lot of information. I will also be pre-recording it, though, and putting it up onto my website that following day on the 29th if you simply want to purchase it from there. Alrighty, everyone, I'm sending you all a giant, giant hug.